Movies in short here. Today, we'll discuss a 2010 adventure, drama film called Arctic. Mads Mikkelsen said this movie may have been the toughest thing he's ever done in his life. Sit back, relax and enjoy. Overgaard is stranded in the Arctic after his small plane crashes. He digs deep, clearing the snow until he reaches the hard frozen earth underneath. After turning off the alarm on his watch he assesses his progress before heading to the shelter of the fuselage of the plane. The dark earth flanked by the blinding white snow, which spells SOS, must have taken him a long time to achieve on his own. He returns his tools to the plane and walks to check the system he has devised for his fishing lines. After plunging a pole into one of the holes he has cut into the snow, the clattering of the metal rig to the pulley system alerts him to check further along. Overguard pulls a fish from the water, looking at his only source of nourishment respectfully as he holds it in his hands. He methodically places the freshly caught fish into a bright blue container and selects another already frozen to sustain him. Back in the shelter of the plane he deftly cuts the fish into small pieces which he savors as he sits in solitude, deep in thought. After his respite, he gathers his distress beacon and hand crank dynamo and heads out again into the cold white vastness. With no response to his signal, he surveys the unforgiving and beautifully cruel landscape and heads back to the shelter of the damaged plane. After removing the socks from his frostbitten feet he prepares to rest for the night, cocooned in the warmth of his sleeping bag. On waking, as part of his daily ritual, he walks to the mound of rough stones known as a cairn, that he has built as a memorial. He carefully removes the freshly fallen snow saying see you tomorrow, before he leaves. Overguard continues to work to release the rock embedded in the frozen earth that has been defying his efforts. It finally relinquishes its grip, after which he rests briefly in the icy whistling wind as the snow begins to fall. When he returns to check his fishing lines, he sees his bright blue container has been broken and raided. A large paw print leads away from it. Overguard cautiously checks the area and runs back to the safety of the plane, locking the door behind him. He sits in shock, overwhelmed and emotionally exhausted at the difficulty of his daily survival. His daily routine keeps him focused amidst his emotional distress. There is no response to the distress beacon and he turns off the alarm on his watch. En route to the security of the plane, Overguard sees the polar bear walking silently, also in solitude, along the vast landscape. The following morning he returns to the cairn and wipes away the recent snowfall, continues to dig the unrelenting icy earth, and selects a single fish from his dwindling supply. He counts as he cranks the dynamo and, as he prepares to leave, he stops in his tracks as the green light on the distress beacon comes on unexpectedly as the weather worsens. Overguard runs to retrieve a flare which he waves frantically to confirm his position to the rescue helicopter flying overhead. Laughing with relief, he shouts and waves to the helicopter pilot. His joy turns to disbelief and absolute despair as the helicopter battles to land in the strong wind, and crashes. He runs to the wreckage to check for survivors. Overguard drags the pilot, who has died in the crash, into the snow to gain access to the young woman who is severely injured and unconscious. After releasing her seatbelt, he checks her injuries and locates the medical kit before settling for the night in the seat next to her. The following morning, after checking that she is alive, he gently wraps his scarf around her neck. He locates an ice pick, flares and a detailed map before he ravenously eats the dry noodles he finds. After removing the helicopter door he carefully straps the unconscious woman onto it telling her that they are moving from there. He writes that there are two people alive, with their location, before he pulls her away to the shelter of his plane. Overguard holds her tenderly before laying her down to rest. He checks her injury, looks for her identification, and gives her water. He takes her hand and asks her to squeeze his hand to communicate that she is alert and compassionately tells her that the helicopter pilot has died. He asks her to try and stay awake as she slips in and out of consciousness. Overguard leaves a carefully placed note for her to read when she wakes. He respectfully builds a cairn as a memorial to mark the position of the pilot and salvages what he can use from the wreckage. Before leaving he tucks a photograph into his pocket. Overguard laughs wryly saying are you serious as he finds a sled in the helicopter wreckage and loads what he has salvaged. Back at the plane, he places the photograph of the young woman's family in her line of vision. The flame from the gas cylinder he has retrieved from the helicopter warms his icy hands. After carefully marking his position and locating the area of the red flag on the detailed map from the helicopter, he circles the seasonal station saying that would be great, but it's too far. He runs to the fishing holes, overjoyed to retrieve a large trout which he cooks, adding noodles salvaged from the helicopter and eats appreciatively. As he begins to feed the semi-conscious young woman, he says, It's Arctic trout. Noodles. He tenderly reassures her that people are looking for her. 
Elvergard sits beside the feverish woman and places his hand in hers which she squeezes weakly. As her condition deteriorates, he makes the difficult decision to leave the safety of the plane and to take the direct route to the seasonal station. He gathers the provisions they will need for the journey, securing them and the woman to the sled. After leaving a note with their identities and destination, both at the plane and the helicopter, he begins the arduous journey, pulling the sled behind him. Overguard checks his bearings and stands looking apprehensively at the vast icy rocky tundra ahead. He reassures the unresponsive injured woman that they are doing fine and stoically continues to drag her along. They halt for the night and he digs a snow cave where they take refuge with him encouraging her to stay alert as he feeds her. The following morning they continue until he reaches the red flag, and wipes away the snow to reveal a box. He rests, deep in contemplation and marks his map before opening the box which contains rope and his identification which he puts into his pocket. Overguard reaches a steep rocky outcrop not indicated on the map. He calculates the distance, noting in despair that the longer alternate route is on the windy side. He decides to climb to the top and sees a relatively smooth path before him. He descends and decides to pull the unconscious woman up slowly and carefully. The rope slips from his grasp. Overguard tries again, using every ounce of strength he has, in his determination to succeed. He loses his grip on the rope. After his third attempt he loses his balance and she plummets down again. He accepts defeat. Although totally depleted, both mentally and physically, he taps into his deepest primal desire to survive. He looks down the slope and says, we'll take a better way. The longer way around the icy outcrops will add at least three brutal days to their trek. He continues to drag the sled behind him before finding a cave to rest overnight. She is unresponsive when he tries to feed her and give her water to drink. He tells her she has to try and continues to tend to her. A polar bear is attracted by the smell of the cooking fish and paws at the entrance to the cave, trying to enter. Overguard uses a distress flare to chase it away. He sits in shock and weeps. The following morning he struggles to drag the sled behind him through the blizzard and turns it sideways to act as a buffer to protect them against the icy howling wind. He rests, totally exhausted, next to the unconscious woman in the sleeping bag. On waking, he dismantles the makeshift shelter and removes his gloves to check the painful frostbite on his hands. He continues to drag the sled along behind him, overwhelmed by the magnitude of his undertaking. When he asks her to squeeze his hand she does not respond. He zips up her sleeping bag and watches over her, deep in thought. Next to the small fire he has made. After checking her wound, he gently places her photograph in her unresponsive hand, observes the blood on her mouth and makes the decision to continue the journey alone. He pulls the sled laden with his provisions, pausing when he sees flowers growing in the middle of the cairn in the hostile landscape. As he walks away he falls through a crevasse. He wakes at the bottom of a cavern with one of his legs trapped under a boulder. Despite his best efforts to free himself, he damages his leg further. Overguard lies back in the snow after his exertions, slowly coming to terms with the desperate and dangerous situation he is in. He finally manages to free his injured leg and lies in the snow consumed with pain before he slowly crawls away back to the surface. He limps back to the young woman on the sled and checks to see if she is still alive. When she greets him he is consumed by guilt at leaving her alone. Overguard weeps as he apologizes for leaving her and tells her it will be okay. Despite the injury to his leg he pushes the sled forward after packing the deep open wound on his calf with snow and applying a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. He taps deep into his mental reserves and slowly struggles forward, battling every step of the way, pulling the sled behind him. The young woman coughs and he stops to give her water, watching as the ground sheet blows away. They make painstaking progress as he rests along the way, with only his will to survive keeping them alive. Overguard removes everything from the sled to lighten the load. He is exhausted at the physical endeavor and the lack of food to sustain him. He crawls very slowly up a slope. He sees a helicopter land quite close by and slides down the slope back to the sled. He agonizingly pushes the young woman on the sled back up the slope, telling her to hang on, they're here. Overguard is so weak he is barely able to stand but he shouts, trying to get the helicopter crew's attention. He sinks to his knees and shakily lights his last remaining flare with his frostbitten hands which they do not appear to see. In his desperation he removes his red parka, which is the only thing that will keep him from freezing, and sets it alight to try and attract their attention. The helicopter flies off into the distance as he takes the young woman off the sled and holds her in front of him, saying, She's right here. He stands in disbelief, holding her close, saying it's okay, you're not alone. She responds when he asks if she can hear him, telling her repeatedly that she is not alone and that it's okay as he gently lays her down on the snow. 
Overgard is incapable of continuing and completely devoid of energy and hope as he lies down in the snow with his head next to hers, and holds her hand. As these two damaged bodies and brave souls seem resigned to their fate after defying the odds for so long, they take small comfort that they are not alone. A helicopter lands close behind them which they do not acknowledge as the movie draws to a close. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks and see you again soon.